Hi, and welcome to the Mr. Baseball Show. Mr. Baseball isn't here today, but we have Casey Stengel and Peter Stiller. Peter, how are you? I'm just fine, uh, Mr. Baseball Replacement. How are you? Uh, well, I was at the VA hospital uh, uh, over uh, Friday, so... I don't know how I'm feeling. I'm wearing my DAV hat, and it doesn't uh, stand for that uh, satanic talking dog the Baptist Church used to put out in the 60s. What was his name? D was Davy the dog? Uh, D uh, no, uh, Goliath was the dog, right? D wasn't Davy the kid? Davy. <laughs> oh, that's right, uh, Goliath the dog. He spoke. He yeah, spoke they both to spoke. Davey. Even the kid. Do you realize? But they all came to, like, uh, you know, this this tremendous uh, uh, spiritual understanding. Ha, huh, with, with at Satan. The end, the at, at the end, uh, you know, the, the good Lord showed up and, uh, you know, Davey saw the light. I don't remember that part of the show. Hey, do you uh, know, speaking of. D uh, talking dogs. Ah, damn. I guess we. I guess we can connect with the Facebook if what's his name is still on. Hey, did you know that the uh, sports equipment universe used to be in Plymouth, New Hampshire? I did not know that. Yeah. Was that with? Was that uh, with Spalding set up shop? No, it wasn't Spalding. It was a company that made Babe Ruth's gloves. Let's see what they were called. I was just reading it today, but you know, my memory, I guess, is like a Swiss cheese today. J J Draper yeah, and I... Maynard. Draper and Maynard. I don't know if we can bring this up, but they were the guys that invented the baseball glove. And their logo was a dog because of Babe Ruth himself. Really? Draper and Maynard? Yeah, of Plymouth, New Hampshire. I'm reading about it in the Globe. I found out about it just today. I oh, guess so. man. So, uh... It's that insightful Globe reporting again. They, in the 1920s, 90% of all baseball players had a Draper and Maynard glove. And they made baseballs, too. But they had a dog as their mascot that was on their gloves and baseball bats because Ruth, when some uh, Red Sox rookie made a great play, Ruth told the kid he was using a lucky dog kind of mitt. So... Wow. Uh, isn't that exciting? Continues. I, 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 I just saw something today where uh, there's uh, uh, an argument going on about who actually owns uh, the, uh, the bat, uh, the babe hit a 60th home run uh, uh, with. Um, uh, the uh, Hall of Fame says they believe they have it, but um, some other people think a relative of Joey Brown has it. Joey or, uh, Brown, who made a couple of short films, he was a. Uh, he's mostly known because he was in Some Like It Hot as Jack Lemmon's love interest. But he made a series of uh, baseball short films in the 30s. Alibi Ike being one of them, I believe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Jo so Joey Brown uh, has the Babes back. And Joey Brown was friend of the Babes. They were tight. Huh. The remarkable baseball passion of comic actor Joey Brown. Satchel Mouth himself. Uh... And of course, uh, as you uh, just alluded, uh, the uh, the owner of one of the the, the all-time iconic lines in Hollywood history. Well, nobody's perfect. Yes, that's true. Hey, uh, how did the Red Sox w lose two two more games? I've been out of well, it. Well, you know, I, I guess uh, the baseball gods decided they weren't going to go 160 and two. So uh, well, I'm disappointed. Well, yeah, it was. Kind of like Sean Manaya shows up uh, Saturday night and no knows them, uh, albeit with the help of a uh, an official scorer's call. And uh, you know, Saturday, Sunday, uh, 
they got beat again, you know, by those mighty athletics. Um, so, you know, I, I guess this is, uh, you know, it was bound to happen eventually. I, I think they will, you know, probably uh, maybe lose uh, once or twice more before the end of April. Uh, but, you know, you still get a lake where they are, 17-4. Uh, and four. Uh, An historic start. I, I think I saw there was only uh, six teams since uh, uh, 1900 that have started 17-2. and two. So, um, you know, you, you got to like where they are, and, uh, you know, I think they, they have a, a fine ball club. You know, the Red Sox had been no hit since April 22nd, 1993. Almost to the day, 25 years. I saw that too. It was uh, it would have been uh, 25 years to the day if it had happened Sunday instead of Saturday. But um, you know, Manaya pitched a great game. He was just uh, you know had great stuff. Did you, you know, watch it? Placement. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, you know, it it happens. You know, they uh, at one point I think it was Sandy Leone hit a pop up to shallow center. And, you know, the shortstop went back, and yeah, he should have had it, I guess. But, you know, it was the over-the-shoulder kind of catch, and, you know, he ended up dropping it. And they called it an error, but, you know, it's the kind of ball I've seen called hits uh, plenty of times, too. But uh, it, it doesn't take away from, uh, you know, the guy, the kid pitched a great game against the Sox, and uh, what the heck. Against the hard-hitting Sox. The hard-hitting Sox, yeah, uh, they've been raking. It, it's amazing, you know, this is basically the same team that finished last in the American League in home runs uh, uh, last year, and they, they've only added one significant player to that lineup. And uh, J.D. Martinez. You know, I, I, I guess it was like a, they reached the tipping point because uh, now everybody's hitting. They have more grand slams. Uh, in so far that then the Reds, Royals, and one other team have wins. It's one of those cute little baseball things I saw. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, gosh, they're hitting. The starting pitching is, has been fantastic. And, yeah, you combine those things, you're going to win a lot of games. Is this Mookie uh, Betts MVP yet year? He's leading the league Ooh. in uh, hitting. With Lusty, what is he hitting, 366? He's, yeah, he's gotten off to a great start. It's funny, like Xander Bogart's got off to, like, an even better start yeah, yeah. Uh, before he went down. Uh, uh, Hanley has been raking. Yeah, they probably have, like, uh, you know, four of the top ten MVP candidates right now. They're... They've just been going great, and uh, yeah, I expect Mookie will be in that conversation at the end of the year. Yeah, he's got he's got six taters. How were the uh, oh, man. at one point when they were uh, fourteen when they only had lost? I can't remember the last game I saw, but uh, they were on uh, pace to hit about five hundred home runs to outpace Mr. Baseball's team, the uh, New York Yankees. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I they, they probably uh, will not keep that pace up, and, uh, but you know, I suspect they have a chance to, you know, uh, certainly be two hundred ish home runs. Yeah, um, why not? What do you huh? think of that? After last, you think that's a possibility. Oh, I think it's not just a possibility. I think it's going to happen because of the competition from down on the Boston Post Road. Hey, did you see Judge's home run? No. Which one? Uh, they said he hit some tremendous tater, but I saw it uh, on a replay, and it didn't look that great to me. Wow. Well, you know, it, it wouldn't surprise me. It, I saw him hit a home run last year, which was, oh, my God. You know, it, it cleared that left field, uh, you know, in Yankee Stadium. Uh it just like totally cleared it, um, and uh, it might have been still going up when it landed. Yeah, he has you know he has power, uh, and uh, when he hits them, they they stay hit. 
but I'm not sure if I saw the one you're referring to. Uh, no, I can't exactly remember it. Hey, uh, do you think the Yankees should have uh, kept the uh, Robinson Cano? Um, He's the only Yankee well, uh, yeah. near the I mean, uh, top. When you look at like uh, who's you know played second base for them in the like what's it been four years now he's been gone. Uh, you know they certainly uh, haven't had anybody of his caliber at that particular position. Um, but you know, hey, and it, it's kind of funny he left. You know, I mean, I, you know, that's one of those cases. Maybe he just wanted out of town. I don't think that the. Uh, it's hard to believe the uh, Yankees would have gotten outbid for his services, but uh, uh, yeah, I, I think if they had that one to do over again, they would have uh, maybe uh, sweetened the pot a little. Well, who knows? Do you think Stanton's going to hit 60 dingers? Giancarlo no, Stanton? I wonder if he's going to hit six dingers. Well, he's hit six uh, dingers. Yeah, uh, okay. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> he's still, isn't his average still, uh, you know, well below the Mendoza line? Uh, let's look it up. Giancarlo Stanton. Do, do you spend any time watching the National League these days? No, I haven't, you know. I mean, I'll, I'll see the occasional highlight on uh, on ESPN or something like that. But, you know, it's uh, I basically watch the Sox, and that's, Oh, they play the NL. In my busy life. Cano's so hitting... Uh, oh, he's hitting above the Mendoza line. He's hitting 224. Oh, okay. And he's got, corrected. he's got non-base well, percentage. You know, I, you know I, I think part of it is, you know, he's been, uh, you know, playing in Miami all these years, and he's come up here, and, the, you know, the temperature's barely gotten past 35, and... Uh, he probably hasn't reacted well to that. And, and plus, you know, you usually see these guys coming over from the National League, and, you know, their stats really take a hit because the National League isn't nearly as good as the American League. So, you know, I, I think that's part of his transition, too, and he'll probably be fine at the end of the year. But, uh, you know, I'm not sure if he's going to approach the numbers he has in the past, but we'll see. Well, ju uh, excuse me, he's only got five taters. Well, Judge is well, hitting a lusty uh, 325. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, uh, you know, he might have had a, uh, uh, you know, I don't know. He he went through, definitely went through a rough stretch uh, second half of last year. And I think he's, didn't he set a record for consecutive games with at least one strikeout? Ah, uh, that wouldn't, uh, how could you set that record? It must be a tremendous thing, like uh, thinking of some of the guys that have struck out 200 times or more. Maybe he did. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, look that one up, because I do think he set that record. And he, I think he had at least one strikeout in a game for like, you know, I think it was almost 100 games. It was, you know, <laughs> but, um. But, you know, Judge will be fine. I, I see the Yankees have started to, they just took three out of four from uh, Toronto. And, um, you know, they'll probably start warming up a bit, too, you know. There's a long way to go. And uh, You, you know, think? I'm, sure, I'm certainly not prepared to say the Sox are going to go wire to wire. But, uh, you know, I, I like where they are right now, and uh, we'll see. He did have a uh, historic uh, strikeout streak. Jesus, you try to go on to these things, and they want you to download apps. Apps. You know, I'm of the generation an app is an appetizer, which I've seen a few too many of lately. 37 consecutive games. He beat Adam Dunn's record of 36, which I guess is the national... Well, how can you have National League and American League records now when, you know, they play each other all the time? Well, it, it, does it say it? it I, I don't think it, does it say it's a National League record or an American no, League it was record? A, I think it's just, a, it's just a major league record. How do you have American what? League or National League records anywhere? No, it's the MLB record. Yeah, that's, that's what that is, you know. Um... You know, I'm not sure that 
you know, I mean, when Bonds broke, the, you know, the home run record, it, you know, it, he didn't break Mark McGuire's. It wasn't the an AL record. It's it's all just major league. Well, Babe Ruth has the AL record for career home runs. And Roger Maris has the career record for home runs in a single season for the American League. You know, they used I to be leagues. Mark McGuire, right? Oh, wait, no, McGuire's with the Cardinals when he did that. That's right. He never hit more than 58. Uh, did he hit 58 with the Oakland? No, he didn't. He hit 58 and then the 70 with the Cardinals. Yeah, yeah, okay. I don't think he even hit um, 50 with uh, Oakland. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. His high water mark with the A's, I, I think, didn't he hit 49 as a rookie or something? Yeah, yeah. Mr. Mr. Steroids himself. Oh, man, he hit, uh, the, his high was 52 with Oakland in 1996. After he came back oh. from that ankle injury. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he... He had a nasty case of uh, plantar fascia, you know. Yeah, but, but his um, career was almost over. So, what do you uh, have? You, have you uh, perused the the rest of uh, uh, baseball as far as uh, the standings? Uh, you know, Houston is uh, off to a great start, and the Angels had matched them pretty much until uh, the Sox got to Anaheim and embarrassed them in three straight. But, uh, you know, I think Houston is where they need to be. Uh, Indians have opened up a little bit of space, and uh, there's no reason why that shouldn't uh, uh, continue to grow. And then um, the only surprise I'm seeing is, like, uh, you know, the Nationals have not gotten off to a good start, and uh, uh, the Metropolitans have gotten off to a, a great start, and so have the Phillies, which is... I wouldn't have expected at all, uh, but uh, you know, and uh, everything else is sort of playing according to form. The Diamondbacks are playing well, and uh, uh, the Cardinals are playing well. Cubs are just treading water, and uh, the Dodgers have just been sort of treading water. Uh, but again, very early, and uh, we'll see. Well, isn't uh, Dave Martinez and the Nationals, when did they pick him up as the manager? I think it was this year. Didn't they, didn't they have Dusty? Uh, right. Last, was it last year or the year before? They, no, Dusty was Dusty uh, last year. So Dave Martinez is their new manager, so that might have something to do with it. Yeah. And, of course, the uh, Diamondbacks have... Uh, uh, Tory Lovello, who you know, who could have been the Sox manager, but uh, uh, anyway, it's the uh, Sox loss and the D-backs game. Although I don't have any complaints about Alex Cora at this point. I mean, how could you? But uh, you know, I, I think Lovello is uh, you know he has the makings of a great manager. Well, Dave Martinez has never managed either. Wasn't he uh, Madden's bench coach? No, uh, was he with? Yeah, he was with Madden with the uh, on the Cubs staff, right? Yeah, wasn't he? Was he the bench I thought, coach? I, I, I think so. I think so. And um, you know, that's where they're finding a lot of guys these days. You know, like Cora was on the Astros bench last year, and uh, baseball. You know, you, you've yeah. seen, there's been some hires lately of guys who have had no managerial experience at all, which is uh, Aaron Yankees. Boone, uh, you know, leading that list. Uh, <laughs> you know, they got him from the flipping broadcast booth. Um, well, it's, uh, but, you know, I, baseball is becoming more like football. You know, you hire somebody off of a staff, right? Of a of a great um, uh, manager or a great coach. Yeah, it's a changing yeah, yeah, game. I, I, I see that. You know, it's. Yeah, in, in, in football, it's usually like, a, you know, offensive coordinator or right. defensive coordinator is like usually gets hired by another team to take the next step. And, uh, yeah, you oh, see yeah. that more in baseball, too. Well, uh, Vince Lombardi, he had uh, Tom Landry. 
He had Don Shula. All sorts of coaches worked for him. And the minor leagues in pro football were called was college football. But uh, so uh, baseball becomes more like football in certain ways, you know? Yeah, in some ways, and, you know, it, it, in some ways it's one of the, like, you know, never the twain shall meet. Um, but, uh, and, uh, you know, and, and I think we can be thankful for that, you know. Thankful for uh, Never the Twain Shall Meet or for the uh, defunct baseball network? Or is the baseball network still <laughs> exist? Man, Don't you think the they should be regional baseball? Yeah, that, that traumatized, uh, well, I think it traumatized both of us, but uh, definitely you. You were just like, I, I remember you just like seething with this uh, Anger. angst and bitterness and uh, well, we could see the Red Sox. It's one of the all-time all stupidest media moves in the history of probably any sport, you know? Well, and now we have interleague play all the time, which we I think is a bunch of crap. All the time. And uh, I, I'm, you know, I'm fine with interleague play. I, I know. I think it's... Yeah, well, I want to see know, uh, some uh, crappy uh, TV... Uh, uh, I, I'll just suffice it to say I, I'm pro interleague play, and uh, you know I'm thinking they should probably play a few more interleague games. Actually, you know. Yeah, we don't the have enough. The schedule is a mess as it is now. You know. We don't have enough but, crappy uh, uh, teams in the AL, so let's let's import some from the NL. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> And, Remember, uh, it was supposed to be about regional rivalries, except nobody in the Red Sox gave a damn about the Phillies. And uh, well, the Mets, you know, man. That's one of those kind of, uh, you know, accidents of birth, you know, because I mean, in the Eastern Divisions, obviously, you're going to have the Mets and the Yankees, you're going to have the uh, Nationals and Orioles, you're going to have the Rays and Marlins, uh... And, you know, that doesn't leave much, you know, I mean. Who gives, um, who gives a damn about the Rays and Marlins? Jeez, oh. Christ, if you had well, to go I to mean, a Rays and Marlins. a regional thing. I mean, that's, you know, that's what they're going to, you know, those are going to be their designated rivals. I mean. Okay, that buddy. That makes sense. So you're down in Miami on a business trip, and they give you some tickets to uh, whatever the uh, stadium's called this year, Grapefruit Stadium or uh, Drive-By Shooting Stadium. And, oh, lo and behold, Miami's playing the Rays. Uh, do you go to the game, number one? Number two, just start opening up the, uh, the little uh, drinks in the, uh, the, mo the hotel bar, or three, shoot yourself. Uh, I probably go to the game just because I'm a nut, you know. I mean, well, it's a baseball game in a new stadium that I've never been to before. Yeah, I'd go, I mean. But then again, I would go if they were probably playing the Reds, you know. It, re it really doesn't matter, you know. Um, My uh, sister but, uh, went to see the Rays. She said, oh, man. You can see it. you get great seats, and it didn't cost hardly anything because there was nobody there. I mean, the Red Sox oh, yeah. aren't there, but... Yeah, I've heard, like, you know, it's, uh, Sox fans have gone down there, and it's, uh, I've, I've heard people say, oh, it's a great place to see a game if you're, like, if you like indoor baseball, because, uh, yeah, you're sitting right on top of it, and, uh, but then again, you're seeing the Rays play, so, uh, you, you gotta take the good with the bad, or is that the bad with the good, I suggest? I don't know. Um, hey, we only got a few minutes. So, what about the American League pitching? Who's got the uh, class staff? Uh, the Red Sox, Houston. How's the Houston's got a good staff? Isn't Morton leading the uh, league in uh, ERA? Yeah, I think Morton's leading the league, and yeah, there. Houston has a you know, tremendous staff. I mean. <laughs> You got Morton, uh, Cole, Verlander, and you know <laughs> Dallas Keuchel hasn't even kind of you know rounded into form yet. So they're going to be pretty formidable. And uh, but cheapest, you know the the Sox aren't slouches. No. And it, it, it's not just uh, it, it's not just reputation either. They've been performing. Uh, they've all been great. Sale, Price, Porcello. 
Um, well, those are the two outstanding so we'll staffs with, right uh, there. You know, once the Rodriguez and Pomerantz get a few more starts in them. But, uh, you know, I see those two staffs as uh, reasonably close. Who do you... Uh... What do you? What about the Yankees staff? Any comments? We only got like a minute or so. Um. Well, you know they haven't probably pitched to their potential yet. Yeah. And that's true. You got to think of that. I don't know. I, if it's, besides Severino, I, I think Severino's going to be fine. But you know the rest of them, who knows? You know, I I'm not. I I don't think that they have. They're on a par with the Yankees and the Orioles. I mean the Yankees and the. Uh, I mean, what am I saying here? The Astros and the Red Sox. Um, Yankees always seem you know, they, to, yeah, do better when they concentrated on their on on getting star pitching rather than these like studs, you know, like Gene Carlos Stanton. Because other uh, than, you know, uh, I think what the, the Yankees go into every season thinking that if we're like close in July, we'll we'll go out and like you know get some like ridiculous star from a. Uh, non-contending yeah. team and uh you know i think that's that's part of the yankees plan every year you know um all right so peter we'll any final thoughts we got uh, exactly two minutes left and my meter's got about my meter's got about five minutes left outside so any final yeah, thoughts well, about uh anything hey the baseball today uh, he couldn't make it today. He's uh, attending bar right now. God bless him. Hey, what do you say? Bar, uh, speaking of uh, Houston, Barbara Pierce Bush passed away. What? Barbara Bush is I didn't dead. Catch that. Well, Barbara Bush is dead. Oh, geez. Barbara Pierce Bush. Yeah, and uh, I did, George might be following her out the door. Yeah, yeah, He's that's not sad. Well, and, uh, you know, and uh, that's, uh, wow, that would be something. But um, they both had rich, full lives, you know? Yeah. I think she would have been uh, happier, though, if she'd been just the wife of one president and the mother of the B commissioner of baseball, which, after all, is what George W. Bush wanted to be all along. And, yeah, and I think he would have been, uh, compared to... How he was in the Oval Office, he probably would have been one of the all-time great commissioners of baseball. Oh, yeah, I would, I would say that he loved baseball. Hey, uh, final thing. You know that Barbara Bush was Humphrey Bogart's eighth cousin. Isn't that exciting? Wow. And, you know, I can see the resemblance. So can I. Hey, thanks for tuning in to the Mr. Baseball Show. Hopefully Mr. Baseball will be back. Thank you, Peter Stilla, for filling in. Till next time. Hey. Keep swinging.